Hey guys, it's me Ethan, back with another video, and today I get to do an interview with my teammate, Yo Moldauer. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. So Yo Moldauer qualified for the Olympics, and he's going to be leaving soon, so we are cheering him on for that. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks again. So I'm sure a lot of people are asking you questions about how you feel, but I'm going to ask you some more unique questions. Yeah, go ahead. So before I moved to Colorado and to 5280, you were like a hero to me. And then now that I've been here, you're like a role model and super great in the gym. And to you, what is the difference between like a hero and a role model? Well, thanks, first of all, for saying that I was your hero and now role model. Um, you know, to me, I think heroes are people that we imagine and we look up to and then um, you know a role model is someone you finally get to meet and you feel like you want to be like them so I think that's the difference between heroes and role models is one's kind of like imaginary and then one's actually like physically there. And then who were your role models or heroes when you were a gymnast or a younger gymnast? Um, you know for me my hero was my dad. You know I, I Loved my dad, he was so supportive, and I just wanted to be like a business man like him when I was younger. I would copy the way he dresses. Um, I would follow him out to work in the morning, but, you know, for my gymnastics career, you know, I loved Jason Gatson, and when I met him, he was amazing. And then when I moved to 5280, Sasha was like my hero and my role model. He was like a big brother to me. He, I got to watch him in the gym train every single day through all the ups and downs and it was just crazy to watch him on the Olympic team you know hit that horse I remember I was jumping up and down on my couch just crying because I got to see him like behind the scenes and it was just an amazing moment for me and it's just so fun being back here with him because he's an awesome guy you know mm -hmm. he's so energetic he's got great advice so definitely Sasha yeah you know Sasha now being my coach is just it's an unreal feeling to see him go through the process and then step into the coaching role and then to coach me and you know be on the floor with me at olympic trials that was just a special moment because i feel like i got to see him you know grow up compete and then he's now coaching me you know growing up and now competing at you know the level that he he went through so it's just it's like it's just like this weird connection that we have that we just both understand the process he knows what I need to say and he's just he's just like that big brother and you know I don't know what you guys think when you guys see me in the gym but you know hopefully you guys are having almost the same feeling I had when I watched Sasha that helps you motivate you helps you you know work through pain work through soreness helps you get up in the morning and just chase after your dreams mm -hmm. yeah for sure like to see how you train so hard but then yet still stay like confident in everything. It's amazing. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate it. So gymnastics is a really high commitment sport. And so can you tell me how you and your family, like how your family supported you through it? Oh yeah. Um, it's, geez, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, just for example, you know, I was in a family of four siblings and, you know, just think about this, you know, none of us could drive at the time. So for me to go to gymnastics, my mom would have to get all the kids up get them breakfast, you know, pack their school lunches, make sure they had everything for school, drop me off at gym, go drop my sisters off, come back, pick me up in between practice, take me home, you know, homeschool me, you know, then drive me back to gym, go pick up my sisters, um, and then pick up my brother, and like take my sisters to rock climbing class. It was just, I felt like my mom lived in her car, and it was just intense for her, because she homeschooled us too. and. You know, my dad, you know, he he went to every single meet. He organized, you know, the flights, the hotel. Um, and I was on a gluten-free diet, so he'd have to bring, you know, a camping little stove that plugged into the wall. And he would have to cook me food and him food. And it was this constant, you know, they always did an extra. And, you know, when we finally started driving, um, you know, I, I finally felt like my parents could relax. So that's... You know, think about it, you're 7 to 16, you know, that's nine years of just constant moving around and never settling down. So it's been crazy, you know, they moved to Denver for this gym. You know, we used to live in Fort Collins on a ranch. The amount of extra that they did for me, 
you know, to keep me in the gym. It's just been unreal, and it's been amazing. Seeing my parents go through all of this, you know, it definitely humbles you, and it makes you appreciate everything. You know, without my parents' help and all the extra work they did, you know, I wouldn't be sitting in the spot I am, you know, in my gymnastics career. But it's, you know, to them it was worth every single second because they wanted to fulfill, you know, me doing what I loved. And I appreciate that so much because at the end of the day, I think about this, you know, I was adopted, you know, they did everything for my gymnastics career. And, you know, this isn't just for me, this is for them too. And it's for my whole family. So some of my best gymnastics friends are actually my rivals and people that I compete against. So can you tell me about like people that you've competed against that you still consider friends? Mm -hmm. I mean, you go through that your entire gymnastics career. There's always, you know, your teammate right next to you and then you get to college and your teammates are against you. But, you know, like Sam McCulloch, you know, there, I think there was one year where it was like, who's going to go like you or Sam? And, you know, for me, I never look at it as a rivalry. You know, I look at it as, it's, yeah, we might be at different gyms, but at the end of the day, we're still on Team USA. And if I can push him, he can push me. And I think if you can push each other, then no matter what, Team USA will be better. So I always look at it as pushing each other to get better. I never look at it as like, I need to beat him or he's going to beat me. You know, I think it's the factor of that we're pushing each other and we're becoming better and better gymnasts because of that. So... When I compete against people, it's also not like hoping they do bad. It's like you want them to do good. You just want yourself to do a little bit better. And you just want everyone to perform at their best. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, gymnastics is definitely an offensive sport. It's just attacking each routine. And I think that's the cool thing about gymnastics is that anything can happen. You know, and you want your teammates to do good. You want your competitors to do good. Because if you do good, you know, it makes you feel better. Like, oh, we all had a good day, but, you know, I'm placing well. That's the, that's the name of the game about gymnastics. It's all in your head, and it's all about attacking each event. Yeah, mistakes happen, and you don't want to wish that upon anyone, but, you know, you just got to reset and go no matter what. Yeah. How do you view failure different than from today's society? You know, for me, failure is just, like, for me, I think it's a common thing. You know, you have to go through failures to succeed. And it's just, it's, I don't even think they're like failures. They're just like life lessons. And they're just like small things that you have to like realize that are happening, you know, analyze it and learn from it. You know, like if you fall out of meat, you know, a lot of kids can get upset and they think they had a terrible meat. But, you know, instead of getting mad and just thinking, you know, you suck that day, you know, take a step back. You know, what were you thinking about before you saluted? Were you confident? Were you, were you trusting yourself or were you scared? And, you know, I think that fits into everything into life. You know, are you confident in yourself to, you know, wake up on time and go to work and do your best? Or, you know, I think failure is just so rated now that everyone puts, you know, a bad thing on it. But, you know, that's just life. It's all these ups and downs and it's all about how you steer your way through them and, and really learn from them. Yeah. So have you ever, like, thought about quitting? And if so, how did you decide to keep going? I, there have been multiple times when I wanted to quit. Like, believe it or not, like, like, I remember when I was, like, 10, I wanted to quit. And once when I was, like, 16. And literally that next year when I was, like, 17. And, you know, for me, it just, like, it was like, oh, I can't do this. Like, this is, this is a lot of work. But, you know, I just, I literally had to just take a day and think about, like, why do I want to quit? Is it because, like, I'm giving up? Is it because I'm mentally thinking I'm not there? Or do I just need to find, like, something that I love about it again? And for me, it was just I was being lazy. You know, I, I thought coming to practice and just taking the turns was, was going to get me to where I wanted to be, which was on the national team at the time. But then I really sat down and was like, you know what? I'm not working hard in the gym. You know, I, if I want to be on national team, I need to work hard. So for me, it was the mindset. It was me thinking just coming into the gym and doing what my coaches said was going to make me a good gymnast. But, you know, it's the effort too. It's how you approach every single day. It's how you approach the turns. Like, does this, like, are you taking this turn seriously? Are you actually doing all the numbers? Are you 
making sure that when you salute a routine and practice, you're putting pressure on yourself and making it feel like a me. So for me, it was more of the mental battle. And, you know, I always tell myself this. If you want to be a top tier athlete or a recruited athlete or an athlete making a world team or an Olympic team, you have to know that it's not easy. And to be successful, it's not going to be handed to you. You know, you can be talented and you can think you're one of the greatest gymnasts, but it literally comes down to how bad do you want it? Are you going to do that extra? Are you going to push through being tired and just telling your parents you want to be sick that day and not coming in the gym? Are you going to push through the soreness? Are you going to push through a stubbed toe or, you know, a sore shoulder? And for me, this past year, I feel like because I've been training myself to mentally battle through all these small injuries and days where I was just so tired and days when I did three on sixes, you know, that was hard, but I just told myself, like, this is what it takes. And I think once you go through, you know, a struggle and then you finally see the results at the end of the year, you get addicted to it. You want to do it again. And, and that's why I always tell, like, the guys, like, embrace the grind because if you want to be successful, you have to, you have to grind it out. Mm -hmm. What is something amazing about men's gymnastics that you think other non-gymnasts need to appreciate more to get involved in the sport? You know, I it's that question is asked to me all the time, actually. And for me, it's gymnastics is just a sport that teaches you so many things about your body that you never knew that you could move or do or, you know, strength positions that you could hold or flexibility. Um, you know, I always tell people if if you go into gymnastics for a couple of years and you quit, that's fine. But go join another sport and see it how well you're doing because you went through gymnastics and how well you know your body. You know, for me, I always, you know, I'd always tell myself if I have a kid, you know, I want him to, I want to put him in gymnastics, not because I want him to do well or push it on him. I just want my kid to be able to know how to move his body. You know, if he, you know, falling knows how to fall right, you know, injury prevention. So for me, I think gymnastics provides this, you know, this system of just knowing your body well enough that if you fall, you won't get hurt. If you want to jump on the trampoline, you won't, you know, whiplash yourself. If you want to, you know, ski better, you know, balance. If you want to skate, you know, balance. If you want to, you know, do parkour, gymnastics is like the fundamental. But, you know, there's so many things that gymnastics teaches you about your body that helps in so many different sports. That's why I feel like when you see a gymnast and then they go try another sport, they pick it up really easily. What international gymnasts do you look forward to seeing in Tokyo? For me, um, I really look forward to seeing Nikita just because there's, you know, a lot of hype right now with him and I just want to see what his, you know, trip pike looks like in person. But I also am really excited to see Kohei at his last Olympics. You know, for me, Kohei is like a god. You know, he's like what I want to look like when I do gymnastics. And, you know, I went to the Japanese Friendly Solidarity Competition in November, and he actually put, like, the participation medal on my neck and, and told me some advice. He said, you know, get after it this next, you know, eight years. And for me, that was really special. And, you know, at my first world championships, he, he came up to me and shook my hand. And I was like, oh, my gosh, he's coming up to me to shake my hand. And I thought that was, like, really special because we all look at him like the GOAT, you know, and for him to come and say hi to me after just waving to him, that like meant a lot to me. What is your number one advice for young gymnasts who have big dreams? You know, my number one advice, uh, you know, I might have said this a little bit early in the video, but embrace the grind. And you know, if you want something bad enough, you'll get there. You know, if you have the right training plan, if you have the right mindset, but you know, it's going to take work and that's okay. You know, you should want to work, you know, when I say embrace the grind, you know, I want you to think about if you just went into the gym twice a week and you kept winning meets, would that feel as good as if you went into the gym twice a day, every single day, took the extra turn, stayed an extra hour, and then you won a meet. Think about the feeling between that, between, you know, you worked your butt off and you, it finally paid off at the right moment. That is a way better feeling than just doing it because it's easy. Yeah.
So will you eventually do a recap with me when you get home from the Olympics and you've had that experience? Of course, I would, I would love to do a recap. So thank you for having me today and I really appreciate it. So, Dude, Ethan, thank you for having me. This was super fun and I'll see you when I get back. Yeah. Stick the dismount on the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.